I find one championship to be in a very interesting position. I find it to be a very unique position. I do the same thing that you guys do. I sit back and imagine what I would do if I were in charge and I critique and I judge and I second guess every move that's made and then I talk to my buddies and tell them what I would have done. You guys do that too, but you want to know where I don't do that anywhere within the sport. I don't do it within matchmaking. Matchmaking is an art. It is truly an art. And if you don't believe that, and a lot of you don't, but, but if you don't believe that, you're like me. Okay, I'm just calling out one of mine. You're like me, but it means that you don't understand it. Joe Silva, the most famous matchmaker of all time. Year was back in 1993. It could have been as far as 94, very early on. This is when the Ultimate Fighting Championship was the only MMA that anybody had ever heard of. It was the only one that ever made television. We heard of smaller shows going on in Brazil and smaller, smaller shows in Japan. We never seen it on television. This is the only one that we had seen. And the Ultimate Fighting Championship was owned by somebody called SEG. And they were losing a whole bunch of money. Well, they took out an ad. They took out an ad in a magazine that I believe was called Black Belt. And a guy from Boston looked at the ad, found some kind of a contact sent an email to the person, and told them everything they were doing wrong with their matchmaking. Now, don't think you need to correct me on the story. That's pretty close. Somebody finally picked, hey, who are you? What are you doing? And Joe started telling them, here's what you need to do. And here's where you need to match people up. And all of a sudden, you go, my goodness, matchmaking is an art to the point that Joe got given a piece of the company, and when it sold for the $4.2 billion, you haven't seen him again. Now, I need to stop this piece right here because I'm talking about UFC. Are you ready, Ryan? Okay. All right, guys. One championship is in a very unique position. As I see it, they're in a very unique position. You know what I do when I like to watch MMA? With everything, when the judges come in, the way the announcer says somebody's name, the way the red corner walks to the ring, the way the blue corner gets shown. You know what I like to do? I like to imagine that I'm in there and I'm doing it different and better. I'm the great mind of MMA. I will tell my friends, I will come over here and I will tell all of you, this is what should have been done. This is how the referee should have handled it. This is how the cut man should have applied pressure. Right? I mean, it's just one of those things. You want to know why I don't ever do that? I don't ever do that with matchmaking. And matchmaking is an art. and Quite frankly, it's not one that I have. Now, I want to tell you this. If you think my statement that matchmaking is an art, if you think that quote is an overstatement, you're like me. But it means that you don't have it. It means that you don't get it. And, I mean, matchmaking is so big and so rare We've had matchmakers be able to retire from the sport because of some of the riches of the sport. It's a big deal if you can do it right. It's a big deal how you're going to match people up. And when I tell you that one is in a very unique position, one championship is doing grappling to the highest of levels. It is doing Muay Thai to the highest of levels. It is doing MMA to the highest of levels. You don't disagree with this. but. Do you have a problem how conflict is resolved? All this sport is, behind the posters and the lights and the cage and the training camps and the money and the lure, all that this is, is conflict and conflict resolution. It is the reason that this works. I grew up on fighting. There was no cage and there was no punches thrown. And the people, as a matter of fact, didn't have any contact. It was called the people's court. And if you guys are of my generation, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And everybody came home, they all looked forward to it. And it was Judge Wapner and two people. And they had a dispute and they agreed to settle it here in our forum, the people's court. Boom, boom. And then they would go play. And it was a 30 minute show and you'd watch it every day. It was conflict with conflict resolution. They'd bring them out, they'd two stories a day, 30 minute period. They give them about 11 and a half minutes. They throw some commercials in. Fade to black, roll the credits. It was one of the most popular shows on television. You have conflict and you have conflict resolution. I only bring that to you 
Because when you're watching this, sometimes, would you like to see the resolution to the conflict under a different rule set? You have that power. You have the ability as a one championship fan to do that. And, and this isn't Chael's opinion. This has been done. What do you think Rod Tank versus Demetrius Johnson was? Now, that was a mixed rules ma match. And they went from Muay Thai and then they went into MMA. Now, I'm not suggesting for you guys. I'm making conversation for you, but let's work through this, right? I've, I've already admitted this isn't my forte, but let's work through this because it is popular opinion that wins the day. What if you were doing a mixed rules match? Right? I mean, don't forget that Mikey has called out Demetrius Johnson. And Demetrius Johnson says, I don't want to do that. I do not want to go and grapple you. I would love to train with you. I make no illusion. You are the best in the world. I, I have my own thing. Okay, but what if you had a mixed rules match? Mixed rules doesn't mean that you have, you have to do Muay Thai one round, you have to do MMA another round. What if they did MMA a round and they did grappling in a different round? I mean, all of a sudden, that's very interesting. You have three different rule sets. You have the same conflicts, but one championship is the opportunity for a different resolution. I just want to know what you guys would think. Is there any reason we couldn't mix a ground round, a pure grappling round, followed by a Muay Thai round? We never even do the MMA because we assume that that's going to be the mixture of the two and whoever would have it. I'm suggesting for you now, before you say yes or before you say, eh, you gotta think of the different matchups. I mean, not for nothing, not Mikey wants to hold of Demetrius. I cannot blame him for calling out Demetrius. Demetrius is the face, at least the North American face. I, I don't begrudge Mikey at all. Quite frankly, I don't begrudge Demetrius for saying, no, I already concede to you, but Demetrius is involved in mixed rules matches. For some reason, whenever we do a mixed rules match, it's always striking heavy. Rampage was gonna get into one of these. Rampage was going to do one of these with a guy named Shannon Briggs, and they're going to box around, and then they're going to do MMA around. And back in the day, it was going to be Roy Jones Jr. versus Anderson Silva. And they're going to MMA around, and they're going to box around. I like the idea. I really do, quite frankly. I'll just remind you, within one championship, we have three options. I just want you to keep an open mind to that. I have no, no other objective right here than for you to keep an open mind to that. But I do want an answer to one question. Because I'm going down the wrong road, put me back on Main Street. But here's my question. I, wanna, I, I think that I've, I've said this, but I, I want to really, a little bit clear. Do you care if you have two guys and you want to see a resolution, right? I mean, that, a few days ago, Piera decides to call out Chemayev. Do you care? Do you care what they do? I mean, if I was to break this down into silliness, do you care if they put their arms up there and arm wrestle? So if you have two athletes and they just got to get a hold of each other, well, you know, a guy can only go do MMA so many times a year. Guy can only do Muay Thai, right? You got the elbows. You watch one championship, you watch some of these elbows, oh, they're slicing. You take a couple of those, you get, you get put in a plum, you take a couple of knees even to the body. You can only do this a few times a year. And I'm just reminding you. In a broad stroke conversational standpoint, they have three forms of revolution, uh, resolution. They got the same conflict, but they got three ways to settle it. Would you be interested in that? Would you be interested, regardless of history and background of the athletes, if they meet in a mutual forum? Would you be against a mixed rules match that included a round of grappling? What do you think?